Good afternoon everyone. Um, it's been a bit of a wild ride in the markets over the past couple of months, especially with all the expectation of potential um, monetary tightening uh, across all the central banks. Um, the Fed has indicated quite clearly that it's looking into tapering its bond purchases, which is what has started the route in the, in the bond markets. And although the ECB and the Bank of England still say that they're going to remain accommodative for a long period of time, it still looks like the futures markets are saying something different. And um, despite the words of um, the Bank of England governor and Draghi, we've gone dramatically lower in terms of in the Euribor and short selling, and the yields have pushed up massively in the Bund and the gilt. In fact, the gilt and the tenure are yielding above three percent, which is the first time in a long time. And then the Euro, um, the Bund is solidly below one forty, which it hasn't been for for a, for a long, long time, and it's yielding over two percent. So, if we actually look at a chart of the Bund, then we sort of just have a picture of what's going on. Um, as you can, and uh, this is a two hundred, no, this is a sixty-minute chart, and uh, this is the long-term trend that's been happening in. The Bund, and as you can see, since since um, July, um, where we were trading 140, we've come off 300 ticks. And if we actually go for slightly further back, um, go further back over here, you can actually see since we've actually dropped even further, about one from 142. 40 all the way down to 136.61 as a low, so that's almost a 600 tick move, and that was from um, July the 19th. So we've actually moved a good 600 ticks, which is a massive move. Um, the markets are all pricing in something that's starting to happen, and in fact that we're not going to be tightening any further. So if we look a bit closely at the bund, we can see this downward channel that we've been having, and as we get a bit closer, you can see that the actual resistance channel going down was broken today and um, it's pushed significantly beyond it. It's actually gone about 70 ticks um, above that um, resistance range. So the question is, is that the end of the downward trend or are we going to push up slightly and then come back down again? So if we look at what the technicals are saying to us, we can see right here from this point here, which was the previous, um, or the low before we had the low over here, the 136.44, um, we actually uh, got a nice upward channel going on here. And um, after it broke this channel, it acted, before this was support, and as it broke it, it acted as resistance. And this channel is also coinciding with this channel up as well, which is causing um, a bearish engulfing triangle I think it's called I'm not sure the exact technical name but as you can see that we are starting to squeeze the range is getting a bit smaller so um, if the technical analysis is right um, we should be pushing back lower again after we break out of this range over here so if this is the case then the next targets are 137.15 and then all the way back to the previous two lows of 136.61 and 136.44 so those are the sort of regions that we'll be looking at. But um, if we break out of this trend upwards, then we're looking at 138.89 and back up to 139.97 as the next two targets in the Bund. Basically, what, what would determine the next um, the next movement of the Bund will be the, the Fed meeting, which is happening next week. So um, it's actually going to be pretty exciting because... Um, a lot of the market has expected that the Fed will start tapering their bond purchases between 10 and 20 billion dollars a month. So um, if anything happens, if they don't taper or if they taper more, then either way we're going to get a massive reaction. And even if they do what is expected, I think we will still get a bit of volatility, but we won't get any clear direction either way from them. So we might start we might just move up and down and then just go sideways in this sort of range as it's done pretty much what the market expected. So um, this is that is the main focus that we're looking for next week. So until then, I, I could imagine this is just going to sort of float in this channel. It might break it, but either way, it'll float in this sort of region over here until the announcement. Um, if we look at the Euribors and have a look at what has been happening 
this is just um, the March 15, June 15 contract and just want to sort of illustrate the move up we've had in this three month spread. So we were trading as low as um, eights, sevens and eights around last month, exactly one month ago. And since then we've pretty much pushed up seven fat ticks, which is 14 prices and reached a high of 15 ticks. And now we've started to come off slightly just as as the same way as the burn has started to um, go back up again. These spreads have sort of come off. So we've come off a couple of ticks from the high. So um, either way, it's been a pretty significant move out, um, upwards. And this can be confirmed if we look at um, a longer term um, spread, so a one year spread. So I've actually got the set 14, set 15 spread up. And this can illustrate quite clearly the big move up we've had up in these spreads. So if we look all the way back from July the 22nd, which is about a month and a half ago, we moved from 24 and a half all the way to 56 and a half. So that's a 32 tick move. So it's been pretty brutal towards the upside. So fading this move, um, it's been a bit difficult if you haven't picked your levels correctly. But either way, if you're playing this long spread, you should be definitely looking at buying the pullbacks because quite clearly the trend is up right now. And as you can see, we're sort of moving against this channel and we've retraced a good eight fat ticks from the high. So this could be another buying opportunity. But again, like I said earlier, I'll be wary, very wary about um, what, I'll be, uh, what I'm doing right now until the Fed comes out. I wouldn't be playing anything big um, because where we go from here, it's all dictated by the Fed decision next Wednesday as it will set the tone for what's going to be coming forward. So not just the decision, but the the comments afterwards. So it, they, if they don't even taper this month, they might taper next month. So either way, we're going to get a bit of volatility. And just like I said on the Bund, um, if they do taper more than expected, we can expect this easily to push beyond 56 and a half in the coming weeks. And if, if not, um, we're going to come back down and then look in towards looking back into low 40s to low 30s, mid 30s as the next levels in this. So one of the biggest movers has actually been short sterling. Now this has been a combination of still persistently high inflation as well as good economic data coming out of the UK. There's been stronger GDP, stronger UK retail sales and pretty much every metric has been going higher and higher, especially the UK services and manufacturing PMIs and construction PMIs. We've actually hit above 60 in the, manuf um, the services PMI, which has been the highest in a number of years. I don't know exactly how many, but, um, you know, and this has all pushed cable up from 150 at a low a couple of months ago to now almost 160. So um, there's a lot of positivity going on in the UK, and that is why the markets are believing that rates are going to actually rise sooner rather than later although Mark Carney has been saying that the rates are going to be increased um, rates won't move until 2016 the market's got different ideas and think this might actually be late next year so um, right in front of me I have a short sterling chart um, this is the March 15 set 15 spread I just want to show that in the past month how much we've actually moved. Now this is just a three month spread and we've moved from a spread of 10, 11 all the way up to 23 as a high and right now it's trading 20, 21. So you can see that the move and short sterling has been pretty strong and there hasn't been much retrace either. It's been pretty much straight in a straight in a line and so it's it's been um, it's been one of the more adventurous trades to play right now but if you know I've been caught quite a bit in this being short and you know a lot of the time I've just had to do some mega averaging and managing to scratch it and um, so you know playing this again with the other two I think the Fed obviously will play a big hand in where this goes and um, also data is becoming more relevant too so if we continue to get good data out of the UK then um, I think we'll continue to push up in these spreads although looking at it if we actually look at a chart of March 16 let's see if we can get this one up um, so if we look at it and a 60 minute chart we can actually see that um, although we've sort of rallied quite a bit here where we've actually come from and we have pretty much moved down bear in mind this is a 
you um, short sterling spread from the first of August it was 98.85 and we've gone to a low of 97.85 so that's a hundred basis point move in the past one and a half months which is pretty big and as you can see um, we've got a trend line going down broke it today it's pretty similar to the Bund but either way this is pricing a lot so I think in terms of downside unless we start getting more murmurings out of the UK out of the BOE that some type of rate action will happen um, I can't see it going much lower than the actual low print that we've had at 97.85 and I think that we're gonna start petering sideways because I think a lot of the move has already been priced in so um, in terms of spreads and the actual outright definitely think we've sort of hit a wall here especially with the UK Bank of England giving such opposite signals to what um, what the market is thinking so I think this is a good time to can go short and if you actually look at the spread matrix from um, the short sterling spread, ma spread matrix you can see that all of these spreads have actually come off a bit today and um, you know we were trading 25s in um, set 15, deck 15 which is the high and same in um, deck 15 March 16 and they have all come off and traded 23s on both same with here trading 22s they've all all of these spreads as you can see have come off a tick or two which is about as good as you get with short sterling these days but it just shows a sign that we have been coming off a little bit and I, and I think if we get back up there again it's definitely worth a short but um, until next time good luck with the FOMC should be exciting hopefully we can make some money out of it and um, do another update later.